Hey, what's up guys? Paulo Munoz here and welcome back to this mini series of masking tips and tools for ZBrush. In this video, I'm going to cover something slightly different that is very useful in a very particular scenario or it was created for a very particular scenario, which is 3D printing. But I'm going to show you how I use it in, you know, in an organic process for sculpting creatures and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are inside ZBrush and I'm using the standard UI from ZBrush. And I have a simplified version of this character that we've been using as a demo. So before we were using this guy that has like 2 million polygons. And now I have this guy that has 265. Just reduce the dynamic resolution uh, just to make it a little bit easier and faster for the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the masking tool or the masking technique uh, is and then I'm going to show you how to apply it or how I would use it in you know in an organic fashion and what I mean by that is just a, an organic uh, sculpture so let's go ahead and go to the masking palette um, here we go so the one that I'm talking about is this mask by draft so this one is a feature in ZBrush that is really really good for um, you know analyzing 3D print models or, or models that are going to end up in a 3D printer. So all this means is that Siri is going to analyze the surface of your model and it's going to mask out the areas that if you were to look at the model from a certain angle, uh, pretty much what a 3D printer does from a, from a single axis, um, what are the occluded areas for that sculpture, right? So um, this will make more sense in just a second, but all, all I have to do is click on mask by draft just with the default settings. So we're just going to analyze that and you'll see it creates a mask if I look at it from the from the front and I'm going to also turn off perspective. So if I look at it from the front, everything that I see here from this angle is masked. So this would be in a way the, what the 3D printer would, would see to start printing. So if I rotate around, you see all of these angles or all of these areas are occluded. So again, this is a tool that was originally created to deal with 3D printing objects or, or preparing 3D objects. So you could basically take this as it is, um, maybe blur the mask a little bit, and then bring in the gizmo 3D. Um, I'm gonna select the transpose master and just do something like this. This is this is not the real the real reason I'm showing you this, but just to just to show you, All right? So you could basically end up with something like that. Um, and this is just like a, a very easy way to analyze where are the areas that would be occluded and that sort of thing. So again, um, I'm not an expert in 3D printing, so I'm not going to get into all the, the aspects of 3D printing. I just know that this was a specific um, feature that was introduced when uh, a lot of the 3D printing features in ZBrush were also introduced. So uh, the point that I'm making right here is that Based on an angle, you can mask the entire model, right? Which is very different than, let's clear the mask, it's very different than doing something like that, right? From this angle, it looks like it's very similar, it's the same, but it is a, it's a pretty clean cut uh, or a very clean distinction between the mask and, on, and unmasked areas. So uh, the great thing about this, again, is that you can set the different angles. So let's say if I want to mask just from the top, so Let's go ahead and rotate the camera to the top and I'm holding the shift key as I rotate I hold the shift key to snap that camera to the front and I can go ahead and click on set direction or set pull direction click on that and then mask by draft and you'll see is now like the new pull direction is from the top right so this is a, a fantastic tool and I'll show you how and why I'm, I'm showing you this in just a second. But uh, first, I just wanted to cover that, right? And you can inverse the pull direction. So if I click on that and do mass by draft, it's just going to do the same thing from the bottom, right? So this is the one that I'm going to use um, or either way, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to clear the mask first. And in order to show you this next trick, uh, with this, and one of the reasons I, I find this mask by draft useful for sculpting, not just to test out uh, 3D prints, is because of what I'm going to show you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, simplify this mesh a little bit. So I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to go to the serial measure. Uh, as you can see, this is just a DynaMesh object, but it's quite high uh, for this sketch. So I'm going to uh, simplify it quite a bit. So I'm going to change the target to maybe 3000. So this target polygon count, uh, the number is in the thousands. So I'm going to set it to three. I'm going to leave adaptive on and I'm going to click on serial measure. All right, here we go. So this is um, obviously a cleaner version 
of that mesh and that's all automated thanks to the Siri measure. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Um, and the reason I wanted to simplify it is just so that we have less points. So right now we have 23,000. Um, in fact, we can just divide it one more time and delete lower uh, just so that we have you know, a smoother version. But I want to maintain this polygon count low um, within the you know, 150,000, 200,000 should be fine. But, you know, for this tutorial, it should be okay uh, with this amount of polygons. So the next thing I want to do now is go back to that mass by draft. Let's click on mass by draft. Remember, I changed the pole direction to be from the bottom. And, you know, this is sort of like targeting all of those, all of those areas. Now, what I can do is blur that mask a little bit. So you can blur it a bit, not too much. And maybe we can invert that mask as well, right? And <laughs> this is going to be uh, a little bit weird for this specific sculpture, but um, what I can do is use the dynamics. So let's go ahead and open that one up. Let's remove the brush and the brush palette and add the dynamics. And this is the reason why I wanted to keep everything within the you know 100,000 polygons because the maximum simulation points that I have set up by default and I don't want to go over this is 250 uh, points which is roughly you know 250,000 polygons or points uh, not polygons sorry vertex or points so now that I have this what I can do is simulate gravity on these unmasked areas the rest is going to be simulated like if it's like drapery or or like a skin sort of like falling or 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 falling. So hopefully this is going to make sense, but I'm just going to click on run simulation and stop it. <laughs> it's a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and change a few things, a few parameters here in the dynamics. So I'm going to reduce the strength of the gravity so it's not as, as heavy when I click on simulation. And I'm also going to increase the firmness to three so that we get like less, as, you know, like the wrinkles and the folds that we get are a little bit uh, larger and I'm going to increase the simulation iterations to 200. Uh, this is kind of like the resolution of uh, or the quality in a way of dynamics. So I'm not going to get into all the settings too much. Just want to show you why and how I would use this mass by draft. So let's go ahead and click on simulation and that's it. Let's stop it. All right. So obviously it just changes the whole sculpture quite a bit, but it creates these, you know, very weird looking things. <laughs> um, that you can sort of capitalize on. And this is, becomes a, a bit more realistic in terms of drapery and pulling areas. So look how interesting this is. Uh, if you wanna make something a little bit more useful and being able to control this a little bit more, what I would use is, uh, let me undo that. Um, and I'm gonna go to the morph target sub palette here. I'm gonna click on store. And that basically stores in the memory of Sivrush a the current version of this model. Right? So all, all you have to do before you run the simulation is that. It's just store a morph target. That's it. And then we can run the simulation. And basically, that, that's it, right? We can clear the mask if we want to. But now we have these really nice wrinkles and, and falls. Um, but, you know, we don't, we don't really need to use all of them. Some of the areas we don't need to, um, you know, we don't need to take advantage of that drapery or, or dynamic effect and that's why I saved a morph target so the morph target allows you to switch this is the, the, the button right here it allows you to switch between the previous state before you run the, the simulation and the, the simulated version and you can use the morph slider to go like to somewhere in between and that sort of stuff but let's keep it simple uh, again the, the whole purpose of this tutorial is the mask by draft and that's the reason I managed to achieve this very quickly just by masking by draft. But the most powerful way of using this morph target, um, I think, is to use the morph brush. So once you have these morph targets saved and you know a different state of your model, in this case all this drapery, we can go to the brush palette and select, uh, let's filter by the letter M and go to morph, this one right here, and we can use a larger brush size and we also have symmetry. So I'm gonna remove with this morph brush, um, it's kind of like erasing this current state and going back to this one, right? So I wanna recover some of these, uh, you know, better defined secondary forms, but keeping all of these interesting um, drapery stuff. So I'm gonna start painting with the morph brush back to those details. So maybe this one is a bit too much. So I'm gonna reduce that. Um, and I'll, it also works with, with pressure. So I'm not, you know, I'm pressing softly in certain areas. 
maybe refine this. I don't like this at all. So let's just pull this back. And maybe this one was a little bit too intense as well. So in reality, the the ones that I'm really looking forward to, to work on um, are the ones here at the bottom. So those wrinkles. But they all happen thanks to that uh, mass by draft, right? Uh, maybe this one, you could also remove it. Uh, but I think I, I like it. So, all right. So now we have this back to similar to what we had before. And I'm just using the morph target to refine some of these shapes. And we can go back to, let's say, the standard brush. So let's filter by the letter S. Go to standard here. Right? And, we, you know, we can delete that morph target. We don't really need that anymore. And we can start, you know, refining the sculpture. So this is one of the tricks and one of the workflows that I sometimes use to generate those secondary forms um, that look, you know, a bit more realistic, um, or at least they, that they make sense. And then you can just go with the standard brush and, and start refining it. And if you want to accentuate maybe one of the crevices in here, you can go maybe let's subdivide this one more time so that you can see more resolution. Uh, we can go with the damn standard brush. So let's filter by the D, damn standard. And I can just sort of sharpen that that line in there, that cut. And of course, the smooth brush to always keep everything clean at this point that now I have a, a clean base mesh. But yeah, so <laughs> the point of this uh, tutorial is that in order to achieve this very, very easily with just a few clicks, the, the tool that I use is this mask by draft, which, you know, is something that was created for a very specific purpose, but you can you can be creative with the tools in ZBrush and, and achieve something like that, um, you know, relatively quickly. All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully you have found this tip useful. And again, I just want to reiterate that it's all about figuring out a more creative way of using existing features or uh, tools that you're familiar with and apply them in, in you know different ways. So feel free to explore and experiment with the things that I show you in this video. And I'm sure you can come up with um, more interesting stuff as well. Now in the next video, I'm going to cover uh, one of my, I would say my absolute favorite way of adding details in Zbrush using custom mask. So I will see you in the next video.